takes more focused effort than for me to just put down a drop box, some milk crates, plexiglass, or a canvas and start throwing paint, smear it around, and splatter it, and hope that somewhere in that process I get a composition that's like, oh, that's a solid composition. I, get, I actually have to think about what I'm going to make first. So that face, the, the, the two layers and the way I pull it out, sketching out ideas. Yeah. Trying to make something that maybe has greater uh, ambivalence or ambiguity. Not ambivalence, ambiguity. Uh -huh. But there's potential for meaning or, or metaphor. Like you can have different readings of the work, which more and more of the abstract artwork feels like really uh, fancy wallpaper. It doesn't. It doesn't. I'm not moved by it. Yeah, for a lot of things, a lot of abstract looks like something that might match the couch. You know? Something yeah, you put on the wall that matches the couch. It looks very nice, might match the rug, you know, but it's not it's not something that is expressing an artist's heart or there are Jackson artist's soul. Pollock's that I'm very moved by. Oh, yeah. I saw but one down at LACMA that's just, it dances on the canvas. The work, it's amazing. That, the work that he's most famous for, he only painted, he only painted that stuff for a very short period in his life. And then once he had sort of exhausted that kind of expression of, of the, the paint, tried doing other things and his alcoholism took over and he wasn't very successful at it and people weren't interested in it. He ended up killing himself. But yeah, he for a moment there, he he really tapped into his self and into something that other people love, you know. I think for myself, you know, the turtle, we've been talking about the turtle on this thing over and over again because it's what I'm working on the last couple of weeks. And it's a paper mache turtle and I'm going to put it on top of a phone booth and I'm not going to get any money for it. I'm not doing it for money. I'm doing it because if I put a big green turtle on top of a, a phone booth at 122nd and Powell, people are going to notice. And that's what, for myself, I really want to be noticed. I want people to notice what I do. I want people to say, hey, you know, that guy's working, and there he is. And I don't, I want the money, but I, it's more important for me to have people see me working, see me doing what I do, see what I create, and how it affects their world. And, Hopefully it'll be a positive effect, you know, I don't know, but all I know is the drive for me to create is not so much to earn money as much as I want to earn money. I mean, I want to be rich like everybody else, but I think there's more of a drive to to be in front of people and, and, and perform. Yeah, there's a performance in, there's a performer in me for sure because I've trained as an actor for many years and I really do. I like that. I like that kind of attention. But at the same time, I like the tangible existence of something that I put on the world that's going to be here after I leave. You know. I, I think that the, the artwork we create allows us to to perform or be in the spotlight longer than we exist. And we touch a lot of people's lives, you know. It's, and I don't know. I don't know why that is, because when I was raised, you know, my parents were very, uh, they were very blue collar and they didn't want any attention. So like, when I was 12 years old, I was in this play and I played King Nebuchadnezzar, right? That was my first acting experience. And uh, it was at school, it was just this little school play, and the, but, the, but the, the, the parents that saw the play were just like, ah, you did a great job. And my dad, I just remember the, the vision of my father when people were coming up to him and saying, man, your son did such a wonderful job on that roll. And my dad looked so uncomfortable. He had no idea what to say. He didn't know what to do. He was like, oh, I wish he hadn't done that because I don't want to talk to these people, you know? It was really crazy. And that's kind of been my whole... I mean, I studied acting in, for 12 years in L.A. and I never, I never got any paid roles. 
you know, and, and I think it's because of that training that I had of, you don't want to be in front of the spotlight, you know, you don't belong there, you don't, shouldn't be there. I don't want the attention. I don't. I don't care. You really about that. don't? No. I just. I don't want to wait tables. I don't want to attend bar anymore. And my daydreams about making a living as an artist is so that I'm able to wake up each day and and have and be able to do whatever I want. Yeah. Just have the freedom to have my time, and which I have the freedom. Nobody. I'm not court ordered to, to work at the restaurant that I work at, right. like our bar, our dishwasher. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, like that's what I daydream about. And so when I think about placing a monetary value on work that I make, it's more of how much money do I need each month to pay my bills and survive. And so I start thinking about, well, then I want to create work that will sell for that amount, just so that I don't have a job. And that I have the freedom to just do with my time as I please. And so that's my focus this next year. First focus should be on finishing projects that I start. The second focus is on trying to lessen the amount of bills that I pay each month so that I work in a restaurant even less and just get that down and down to the point where, all right, I'm making enough money now where I don't, I don't need that. And I don't know if that's, I don't know if I'm driven in that way to actually make that happen. So I, I'm wondering more and more if I just, I work on projects, that's just something I do because I enjoy it. And when I'm done, they're going to go on my walls. I've sold less than $2,000 worth of artwork in my entire life. And that's goofing around for 20 years and hanging in coffee shops and small galleries. Well, one of the things I've realized that doing these interviews is that the people who are making money as artists treat it like a job. I mean, it's a job. They get up in the morning, they work on it, they, all of the promotion activities, all of the stuff that they do, that's their job. And, you know, as an actor, I never really thought about acting work as a job. It was always like, oh, that was the dream, you know. I, I would pay somebody to be in their movie, you know. But, but the real professional artists and the professional actors don't think about it like that. They think about it, it as, as work. A, you treat it as a business. Yeah, it's a work. It's a job. And they... A, a fledgling band is going to stuff envelopes with promotional material and send them out. And do whatever you can to if it if it allows you to do the thing that you love doing the most. And why are I don't know? Then like Neil Young talked to in one of his live concerts about he only had he's only had one job in his entire life. And it was two weeks at a bookstore. And he said he was horrible at it. He's played, he's made a living as a professional musician his entire life. One job, two weeks. That's it. And then he just decided, eh, I don't like that anymore. Well, he just wasn't, he wasn't good at it. He couldn't invest in it. And I don't think there was any doubt in his mind. Was there any doubt in, like, the artist that we know the most, you know, whatever genre, like, this is what I do. Well, that I'm not going to uh, Johnny Cash have doubts. Like, should I go back to community college and do that welding program? I mean, like, they just, they just do it. That was the thing that got me about, uh, he was a woodworker that we interviewed. What was his name? Uh, Chris Wagner. He went to grad school for uh, fine arts. And he ended up being a, a sculptor. He worked with wood, and he had a special kind of coating that he put on his. But you know, when I, when we talked to the guy, he didn't he didn't talk about anything philosophical. He did talk about having a crisis of faith. He had gone to Bible school, and he chose to go to art school instead. But once he made the choice, and he went to. Uh, grad school and he graduated and he said oh I've been working as a professional sculptor ever since and that was it and there wasn't any doubt in his mind that that's what he was going to do and that's what he was doing and that was it you know and he didn't really get into a whole lot of depth 
about his emotional attachment to any of the statues or what they meant to him or anything like that. It was just, this is what I do. And I get paid to do this, and I do it professionally, you know? It's never been that simple for me, ever. It's always been like, my whole entire being is caught up in everything that I create, and everything that I create represents some kind of important part of aspect of my character, you know, and all this stuff. And I don't know, maybe I get carried away with myself and that shit, you know? You have a website or anything? Are you on Facebook? No. No. He works at Aquariva. You can find him at Aquariva. That is a true story. <laughs> uh, so how can somebody commission you? Do you have any of your work to show on your phone? I don't think so. No? no? Did you show us the picture that you had on your phone? Yeah, that was just a sketch. Yeah, that was a. It was actually. Wasn't it photography? Wasn't it. I just took an image off the internet just so I could fool around with it and try to get an idea of what to do. And I've already taken that image, enlarged it, and uh, now I'm done with it. I've moved it to the side and I've transferred it to, to wood. I've scroll cut the, uh, the profile of the. Or the yeah, the shape of the face out. Started painting it uh, this week. Um, now trying to figure out how to fix another layer of wood on top of that. I've, I've never. It's so it's figurative. I've never done figurative work before, but that's the answer to the question of like, if I went to a gallery, what would I get excited about? And it's um, it's not within. It's, there's no borders. It's wall art that's going to be sculptural, so it's not within a rectangle or a square. There's no frame for it, and that I, I'm kind of yeah. I wouldn't, I don't get excited by work that's got edges like that, like straight lines and right angles. Yeah. So it's hard for me. I'm, I'm trying to to really like, answer those questions. What is it that would excite me? And now, so it's got the profile and that coming up on the back of the head. So it's like this giant illustration of a, a heart, and then it transforms into hair, and then like ravens, and like trying to create metaphor and meaning. And all right, this is this is interesting to me. Now. Like, do it in such a way that uh, yeah, I want to see it. Like, fuck that. like <laughs> that's cool. Like that's hot. So uh, on the 23rd of January, 7 p.m., we're having uh, what we call a 4th F and Friday, Triple F Party. It's a gallery. We've invited everybody that we've interviewed to come and be a part of it. A lot of them we've asked to donate a small piece of art because we're going to have a, a free will donation um, of a raffle, and we'll raffle off all of the free artwork that we get from all of the artists that we've invited. I'm going to raffle off some one of my pieces, and Jacob will raffle off one of his pieces, and we've got other artists that have committed to that. It's part of the thing that we're doing right now, so we'd like to formally invite you to that. I'll treat it as a deadline, and I'll try to finish this piece. Cool. I won't donate it, but... No. No, you, you can show it. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to donate anything. We're just asking. Yeah. If, if you have the, the donation isn't a requirement. Um, the only requirement is the interview. We just like it's something that we're we're, we're offering the, the the chance to do that for the. But for us, what we recognize cool. is that most artwork gets sold because people know the person who made it and they like the person who made it. You know. And, a lot of artwork is wonderful and, and it might catch your eye and, oh, I gotta buy that piece. But the reality is most artwork gets sold to people that know the artist and love the artist. Picasso and had a lot of friends. That's the whole point of doing this interview is to let people know who we are and what we stand for, you know? And, and, and that's the whole point of the party too is that people not only get to see them on the video, but then they can come to the party and actually meet them in person. And, and get to know people that way so anyway uh you got any last things you want to say 
Power to the people. Merry Christmas, Kill everybody. Uh, like us, share us. We love you. We love you. Thank you for tuning in.